Seguimos desde el Auditorio AXA en el quinto Congreso Internacional de Pacientes. Estamos emitiendo en directo desde el Auditorio AXA, pero ahora lo están ustedes pudiendo ver a través de nuestro canal YouTube. Eh, hace un instante hablábamos de los isadoas. Eh, pocos tratamientos tiene la artrosis, pero creo que lo que viene ahora es justamente algo interesante, novedoso y sobre todo para la gente que tiene artrosis, pues con una expectativa fan, fantástica. ¿no? Sí, correcto. Tenía que estar aquí con nosotros, pero un problema de último hora no, no le, se lo ha impedido, pero sí. estamos vía online con el doctor Matías Schiffer. Sí, ¿no? esto, como, como decía muy bien Ricardo, eh, es un nuevo tratamiento para la artrosis de rodilla. Es un tratamiento intra, intraarticular, eh, intraarticular eh, dijéramos con quitosano, eh, para mejorar la artrosis de rodilla. Es un tratamiento que ya está aprobado por la Agencia Española de Medicamentos. Sabéis que antes de, de poner un fármaco o un medical device, pues necesita la aprobación de la agencia. O sea, esto está claro, como tiene que ser, ¿no? Está aprobado por la Agencia Española. Hay una evidencia bastante clara en Europa. Entonces, aquí en España, pues, se ha aprobado. Entonces, claro, la UAFI, como siempre, como os comentaba al principio de, de la reunión, lo que queremos es tener la máxima información eh, para nuestros pacientes para que... Eh, como comentaba ahora el, el doctor Román, ¿no? de que realmente ensayos clínicos que se hagan, eh, productos que puedan salir, que los pacientes lo sepan, los médicos, etc. ¿no? Entonces, eh, pues ahí está, ahí está el doctor Schiffler, sí, pues, ¿eh? ahí, sí. ahí, ahí lo tiene, okay, y, y, uh, y aquí lo tiene. Well, uh, thank you very much to stay here, uh, doctor Matías Schiffler. He is the, the, the chief of medical and compliance officer for Kiomet Pharma. First, Kiomet is a very serious company. I know the company for some years, and they are a very good company. They are located in Belgium, okay? And, uh, uh, you know, uh, well, uh, Matthias, sorry I, I, that you don't stay here, you know, but don't worry, uh, you are here online, uh, and I hope that, you know, the, the situation for his son will be fine, uh, and, uh, because it was, it was previous that he stay here, no? But by, for some reasons, Uh, they cannot be there here, but they, they can present the data that we have with this new uh, uh, product that it seems very promising product uh, in the field of osteoartritis. Tenéis traducción, es en inglés, pero podéis coger eh, los traductores, ¿de acuerdo? Para poder eh, escuchar la, la charla en inglés, ¿de acuerdo? Uh, Matías, when you want, you can start it. Thank you very much and go ahead. Perfect. Perfect. Very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Derges. And first of all, uh, I'd like to start this presentation by maybe apologizing twice. First, uh, I would really have loved to be present today and to be able to, to talk to you in, in person. But obviously, COVID has think differently and I had to stay home and do the presentation remotely. Second, uh, for, for my end, I really apologize, but I don't speak Spanish fluently. So I promise for the next time, for the next Congress, I'll do my best and I take it as a challenge maybe to speak Spanish ne next time. H having said that, uh, and Dr. Verges, and thank you for the kind introduction. I'm based in Belgium. I'm also a general practitioner by background, currently uh, seeing patients at clinics suffering from osteoarthritis. So today's talk is gonna be about a new opportunity and a new innovation in the treatment of knee osteoarthritis. It's going to be a discussion about ketosan derivative, whereby I'm going to have a presentation in three steps. Step one of my presentation will be talking about osteoarthritis, knee osteoarthritis, the unmet need, and then sharing with you the work that our scientists at Kiamet have been working over the last few years in order to design this new treatment for knee osteoarthritis. Second part of my presentation will be answering the question about if we do start injecting uh, the single injection, uh, carboxymethyl ketosone, into patients suffering from neosartritis, what are the clinical trials telling us? What is the efficacy? And how you patient at the end of the day do feel better when it comes from a symptom point of view? The last part of my presentation will be focusing on a recent experience, real life data that we've been collecting from a healthcare professional in Belgium who has been starting to perform injections in more advanced osteoarthritis patients. And I will disclose and be really happy to tell you a bit more about what are the preliminary findings we have had so, so far. So let me talk a little bit more about the emet need in neosartritis. And I'm 
pretty sure at this stage of the Congress, it's not the first time you'll be hearing that the prevalence and the incidence of osteoarthritis has been increasing dramatically over the last uh, couple of years and will continue to raise in our countries. For sure, what is important also to consider when we are suffering from knee osteoarthritis, and this is the literature telling us, is that there are a lot of other comorbidities that are coming together with this uh, knee osteoarthritis. And we need, as a healthcare professional that I am, listening to our patients, understanding what their needs are, and take therapies in order to take the patient in a holistic uh, point of view, not only probably knee osteoarthritis symptoms. Uh, of course, there's no cure yet for osteoarthritis. There are no disease modifying therapies yet on the market, but pretty convinced when you look to the literature and the clinical trials going on, there's a lot of progress being made and, and hopefully uh, some uh, innovation or other innovation will come uh, along. Thirdly, uh, when we mentioned uh, neosteotritis, we need to also think about patients who are in the most advanced stage of osteoarthritis, which we call advanced neosteotritis. And we do know as a physician, and I'm seeing patients daily in the clinic as well, that those type of patients with the advanced stage are really poor responders to the existing conservative treatments. Hence, there's a need generally for innovations in order to reduce pain as a major symptom of osteoarthritis. And last but not least, but I think it's important being again a physician, we do need to listen to patients when we are running our clinics. We do need to take the time to understand what their needs are, what are the symptoms they are suffering. And hence, we as a healthcare professional, we do need to put in place an individualized, personalized approach of patients, answering to their needs, including different type of treatment options, which we need to consider. We really need to be very careful about that. And we do need to be very uh, thorough about that because it's, it's about having the right patient at the right time with the right therapy. And if we get this mix right, then we're really in a position to be able to help patients reducing their, their symptoms. From a disease progression standpoint and from a physiological standpoint, what we see here on the slide is that osteoarthritis is being driven by, let's say, systemic factors. And on those systemic factors, you have factors like age, gender, ethnicity, whereby we could not, not influence them. But for sure, inflammation is really part of osteoarthritis and disease progression. So every single innovation that can have a role on in inflammation, impacting inflammation, oxidative stress, would have a positive impact on the symptoms like pain. Second set of factors that are influencing, you know, the progression of osteoarthritis or the development of osteoarthritis are expressing factors. Repeated mechanical stress from different origins, which ultimately will be reducing lubrication into the joint and will degrade uh, the cartilage and hence uh, develop osteoarthritis of the knee. This is really the kind of two pillars whereby our scientists have been working on for a couple of years in order to design a new polymer, which is carboxymethyl ketosan. And you see it here coming up on, on, on the slide. Uh, carboxymethyl ketosan is a soft implant. It's a soft implant that has been designed coming from natural source, which is a wide button mushroom called Agaricus bispos. It's totally different from the other chemical structure you're aware that is being used by healthcare professionals. And it has been designed by the scientists not to be a repeated injection, three, five, sometimes different series of injections, but has been designed to be a single intraarticular injection within the knee. Totally resolvable and having long lasting clinical performance. That's really the way our scientists at Climate have been developing this innovation over the last few years. As I said, from a physiological standpoint, and we do when you do drug development, you don't want to have an impact on the oxidative stress, and you don't want to have an impact on lubrification. So again, when you do research and you develop new polymers, it's carboxyl methyl ketosan, it has been designed to reduce this oxidative stress hence providing protection of the joint and augment enhanced lubrification of the structure. 
Degradation process, which is important because it's a soft implant, it follows a normal physiological route of de de degradation, which we know as physicians, which has been driven by macro macrophage. And uh, this resorption process can, a few hours post-injection, it might be inducing some transient reversible pain. We've been seeing this in clinical trial setting, but it's totally reversible and not impacting the clinical benefits when it comes to control of, of symptoms. So when it comes to the mode of action and the dual mechanism of action of cabocimethylketosan, at this stage, it's not a surprise anymore. We do see the extracting factors, those repeated mechanical stress on our joint, which is our knee. And on the right side, systemic factors, whereby inflammation plays a very important role in the disease progression through the oxidative damage. When you have begun, and when those mechanisms have been accelerated through osteoarthritis, what you see happening within the joint is an increased production of uh, reactive oxidative spaces. And those reactive oxidative spaces will literally act as scissors and cut, cut our natural endogenous acid, uh, urinary acid, and reduce the molecular weight. We all know that this natural endogenous uh, urinary acid is a major component of the cerebral fluid, hence lubrification. If you are in this concept of inflammation, degradation, osteoarthritis, you will have pain appearing at a certain moment in time. And as a consequence, you will have a loss of lubrification within the joint, and you will have a disruption of the joint tissue homeostasis. In the design and the development of carboxymethylketosan, our scientists have been able to develop the polymer in order to protect the joint. The protection of the joint with a better interaction around the joint tissues by reducing the oxidative stress by a higher radical scavenging capacity uh, versus urinary acids, fivefold what we've seen in preclinical setting. In addition to that, we protected also the endogenous present as urinary acid, and of course, providing an additional enhancement of lubrication, which is essential when you perform such a single intraticular injection for patients suffering from knee osteoarthritis. So from a preclinical package standpoint, in the lab setting, our scientists demonstrated that uh, cabotimetimetazone really were going to bring some new clinical performance efficacy. But we had to demonstrate it. And the way we demonstrated this clinical performance of cabotimetimetazone is by running a clinical study. You have a protocol, you have a synopsis, and you investigate how good the injections are performing in a clinical trial setting. For us, uh, this trial is called the approved clinical trial, and I'm gonna share with you for the first time, and that's why I'm delighted to, to be also remotely present here, uh, share the data with, with all of you in the room and in the audience. So the first question to ask ourselves when you perform an injection in the knee from patients suffering from knee osteoarthritis is how is gonna the pain reduction gonna look like? What I see happening from a clinic standpoint when I see patients is that you wanna have an effect that is fast and long acting. And that's exactly what you've been seeing here in the approved clinical trial protocol. What you see here on the graph is we, had, we have been able to demonstrate a fast decrease of pain Within two weeks, we've been able to demonstrate a statistically and clinically significant decrease versus baseline. The pain reduction was lasting over a three months period, whereby it continued to decrease and it was lasting up to six months follow up because patients were follow up up to six months. And at the six month time point, we were able to demonstrate a 66% pain reduction in the WOMAC pain scores and scales that have been utilized in this clinical trial, which is a gold standard versus baseline. So to the first question, do we reduce pain in a clinical trial setting? The answer is yes, 66% pain decrease fast and long lasting. Next question to ask ourselves is what about stiffness? You might have been decreasing pain, but what about stiffness? Because you need to, to feel better stiffness in order to be able to walk and to have better daily activities. And here you see the same kind of rep representation in a clinical trial setting. Fast onset of action within two weeks, statistically significant decrease 
of stiffness, long lasting over three months period and maintained up to six months. Six months follow up, in total, a 62% reduction of stiffness at six month timeframe. Thirdly, you want to have an appreciation also in a clinical trial setting to have the overall physical fun functioning. In our case, in the approved clinical study, following the single injection of carboxymethylketosone, you want to see if at six months, the physical functioning of the patients who were included was performing better. And the answer is yes, 62% here, better when it comes to physical functioning score, statistically and clinically significant versus baseline. So at the end, when it comes to the WOMAC scales, and WOMAC scales are the reference in assessing uh, products in clinical trials, the total score when it comes to WOMAC does reduce by 63% at six months, statistically significant. With again, the same kind of curve you can see here, fast onset of action, maintained over three months, and follow up up to six months, statistically significant. So yes, answering the question, are we or were we able to demonstrate a clinical benefit of cabocin methyl ketosone in clinical trial setting? The answer is clearly yes, from an evidence standpoint. Two other questions remain then whole open uh, when you perform on clinical studies. What are the respondents rates? And respondents rate is not something we define in clinical trial. We use the highest standards when it comes to clinical drug development, which is coming from the International Society of Osteoarthritis and OMEHAC Society. They have been defining how respondents rates should look like. Like, for instance, you see here, a high improvement in pain or in functions above the 50% or equal to 50% or absolute uh, change score of uh, equal or higher than 20. The respondents rate that we were able to demonstrate in clinical trial setting at six months was around 76.5%. When you would compare this with other uh, literature data, you will have anything between 50 to 60% in terms of respondents rates. The third question, when you have answered the clinical benefits, benefits of it and the respondents rate, which I've been showing to you right now, the third question is, what about patient and physician satisfaction? because you won't have physicians and patients being satisfied when using this single intraticular injection. And we see here from a patient satisfaction level at six months, 86% of patients were reporting back that they were very satisfied to satisfy. Hence patients, 90% of them commented the fact that they were very satisfied, extremely satisfied with carboxymethyl ketosone. So ultimately, very strong preclinical data set about our soft implant, completely resolvable. It's an innovative chemical structure. It is coming from a white button mushroom called Agaricus bisporus. It has an innovative chemical structure, as I said. It does reduce the oxidative stress and it protects thanks to capacity to scavenge the free radicals which is important because inflammation is part of the disease progression. And of course, we enhance lubrification. Preclinical setting, strong package, and it's a single intraticular injection. The second step that I've been presenting to you was, what about an equitable trial setting? And yes, clearly we demonstrated with the evidence we have uh, in clinical trial setting, a short and long acting up to six month clinical performance for patients suffering from osteoarthritis. We know that the resorption process goes through a macrophage reaction, which is a natural physiological process. Some pain might be appearing post-injection, but in all cases, it will be transient, reversible in a few hours, sometimes taking an set of painkillers uh, to reduce the pain with absolutely no impact on the clinical performance, which we've been seeing in the approved clinical trial. As I said to my introduction, the third part of the talk will be about real world evidence and about what is the evidence we've gathered now in a real life setting, meaning uh, injection being performed by a surgeon in Belgium in his patient population. Well, what have we been learning out of it? What are the lessons and what have we been seeing here? First of all, we've been seeing that uh, advanced neosotritis, as you can see here on the graph, is really an open gap. We see, and I see those patients in my clinic quite regularly, whereby we progress towards mild, moderate, severe from a Kogan-Lorenz standpoint. 
uh, what do you do then? What are the conservative treatments you need as a physician to propose or suggest to your patients in order to enhance their quality of life and reduce all the nasty symptoms coming from osteoarthritis? Those patients that I'm seeing are patients just before knee surgery. What are we doing? What can we propose to them? And in this patient population, we have had a recent experience in Belgium in real life setting, which I'll come up later on. So this higher unmet need is clearly described when you suffer from a more advanced stage. And we all know we're talking about a person maybe just before knee surgery of someone which is not eligible for knee surgery for whatever reasons, comorbidities, uh, you're maybe not in surgical indication, or maybe you're not, not responsive, respond, responding to other types of intratricular injection like uh, hyaluronic acid, for instance. And we know this from the literature. So what are we doing? What are we proposing? And what could be an option moving forward with cabotimethylketosone? Last point on this slide, which is an important one when it comes to treatment of uh, patients suffering from osteoarthritis, which I'm doing also in my clinic, is also providing conservative medical treatment, taking into consideration the person in a holistic way, and having clearly defined treatment goals and plans to achieve commonly in between the physician and the patient. And this you can do as a physician if you really actively listen to the complaints of your patient during this, those clinics. And clearly, what, what I'm saying here, the three to target strategy, agreeing to a plan, agreeing to a treatment goal is something really important moving forward to ensure that the symptoms are under control. When it comes to the advanced osteoarthritis knee uh, description, what are the types of phenotypes uh, we have had some evidence on? And this is part of the real life experience we have had in Belgium, whereby uh, a surgeon in Belgium started injection in 20 plus patients. And we've been seeing that injections were performed in advanced osteoarthritis patients. Advanced osteoarthritis patients, whereby uh, some of them were suffering from a stage four cardiac And we know from the literature, and, and you know that physicians like to read literature, this is coming from Eurovisco, all experts agree that if you have a Calgrin stage four, the more advanced radiological status, there's really a predictive factor of failure of physical experimentation. Advanced Calgrin three are borderline Calgrin three, four patients that we can see. Obesity is also uh, a risk of factor of failure of treatments. And, Surgeon in Belgium had been injecting a patients with BMI above 30, severe, isolated patellofemoral osteoarthritis and tricompartmental osteoarthritis are really phenotypes of patients whereby we know by literature that those are predictive factors of failures of current conservative treatments. And on the other hand, we are gathering with cabotimethylketosone real life evidence whereby the preliminary findings are really encouraging and, and positive. And that's one of, one of my last slides about the learnings uh, we had so far in the advanced osteoarthritis setting. It's important because it's a real world evidence survey. It's data captured on a day-to-day -day clinic by orthopedic surgeon here in Belgium. Very important so, you need when using carbotimetazone where you assess a knee for suffering from knee osteoarthritis, you, you need to perform really a holistic medical assessment. You really need to assess the knee uh, in front of his inflammatory status. And we know as physician, if you have an inflamed knee with effusion or not, or with local sign of inflammations or not, your duty then as a physician is to perform a treatment to reduce the inflammation. It's not about injecting uh, a viscous supplementation at that time because inflammation will act as scissor and it will have no impact from the symptoms point of view. In our real life setting with carbocimethylketosone, in the practice in Belgium by a colleague, we've seen that it's important to take in consideration. Thirdly, what are the preliminary findings on the 20 patients who have had an injection and, and been suffering from this advanced osteoarthritis knee? Uh, we've had average 78% who came back to us six to 10 months after the injection 
telling us, well, I feel I have a positive evolution of my knee. I feel better post-injection. And remember, this is a single intraarticular injection of carboxymethylketosone. Average 78% again of patients were telling us six to 10 months after the injection, well, I have less pain prior uh, versus baseline where it was six, six to 10 months ago. So those findings, uh, which is coming from a real life setting again, are really encouraging, both for, for us, both for the osteoarthritis uh, patients around the world. Those are very promising findings. And we will be further confirming this in a clinical trial setting moving forward. And again, what I'd like to emphasize on from a healthcare professional uh, point of view, we do need to listen much more to patients, to their complaints. And hence, we do need to come up with more individualized, personalized plans, treatments, and goals for osteoarthritis. I thank you very much for your attention. I think it was my last slide. Thank you very much, Dr. Ma Mathias Sifflers, for your excellent presentation. And also on time, we have uh, four or five minutes. Um, <clears throat> I think, uh, you know, we appreciate that, you know, uh, uh, Kiomet Pharma present the product here in, in OAFI. I think they are changing uh -huh. rules in, in terms of the, that the patients. Now we know that a new treatment is available. That is very important, no? That means the rules are changing, no? And uh, it's a little bit that we spoke be before, that the obligation that we have that to know exactly what is new, what we can help to our patients, et cetera, et cetera, no? Uh, Dr. Macias, um, what do you think, uh, when will be the product in the Spanish market? Is already, it will be soon, or what, what do you, when, when do you expect to have the product in Spain that our patients could go to the doctors and to be prescribed with the product? Is possible? now or we can wait a little bit or what is the, the, the expectation? Yeah, it, it's a good question, Dr. Verges. And, and you're right to mention up front that, you know, rules are kind of changing moving forward on how we treat patients with osteoarthritis. And as much innovation we have, it will give physicians much more possibilities to treat symptoms. The availability of carboxymethylketosone is not, not yet ready in Spain. Uh, we are having actively discussions with Spanish partners to bring it on the market uh, rapidly. But it's, it's, I can not disclose any data at this moment in time. Okay, when, when, uh, please, when it should be available, tell to us because we can pass to, yep. the, to the AFI, to our patients, to other medical societies because, you know, AFI is working with uh, all medical societies, you know, practitioners and rheumatologists to say that new treatment is available, you know, and please, uh, you know, uh, for the, our patients because one of the things that we, we have, you know, very well, uh, because it's the, the treatment in, osteop in osteoarthritis is a poor treatment. We don't have too much treatment. Uh, that means that's important the, the, to have new, new, new products like this, no? And about safety, it's a very safety product in terms of that, because you, you know that this product is intraarticulary. Eh? I mean, yeah. about safety, it's, uh, the safety, it seems very good, no? According with the data that you present, no? It, it, it is, Dr. Verges, uh, and I think you, you, you're right to mention uh, that it is a single intraarticular injection. Uh, which can and will be providing some pain reduction lasting over six months. When it comes to the safety profile, we have had good safety profile, otherwise we would not have been being granted a CE mark. The thing to consider from a healthcare professional standpoint, as, as I was saying, as a physician, re you really need to assess the knee of your patient, okay. meaning you need to check whether there's an inflammatory status or not there's a fusion or a local sign of inflammation. Because as a phys physician, and this is true for every other single uh, shot in theoretical injection, if you have an ongoing inflammation, your duty as a physician is to reduce this inflammation first. And then, then after a couple of days, considering an injection of a conservative treatment. And that's something really to have in mind when it comes to carboxymethylketosone. Uh, last point I would like to say on, on, on the safety part, we see from a clinical trial standpoint that we have some pain uh, post-injection. Uh, the pain appearing post-injection is always transient reversible and has never impacted the clinical benefit of the injection. Okay. Bueno, 
¿Os ha quedado claro? Esto es un tratamiento muy interesante para artrosis de rodilla, ¿eh? Eh, para grados y, y iniciales y quizás intermedios o avanzados. ¿eh? Quiero decir que pinta muy bien. La verdad, los datos que ha presentado el doctor en eficacia son buenos. ¿eh? Ten en cuenta que un 60% de, efic 60 de eficacia en la mejoría de los síntomas de rodilla realmente es un buen tratamiento. ¿eh? Para la línea quizás un poco mejor que el ácido hialurónico. ¿eh? Por lo tanto, pinta muy bien el producto. Si además es seguro, yo siempre digo que muy importante, lo primero no hacer daño ¿no? cuando utilizas un tratamiento. ¿no? Esto es lo primero. El primo no nocere, ¿eh? que se dice. Y, y, y bueno, parece que pinta muy bien. Y bueno, yo creo que estamos muy contentos. We're very happy that you present the product here in Oafi. Uh, and thank you, Kiyomet, to be res respect with us, with the patients, to present this product here. And I hope next year will be in the market and uh, we can present some data from the market, the Spanish market, you know, and uh, probably maybe some of you, maybe you can improve it about this treatment. No? That's the way uh, that uh, we are happy to do it in OAFI and collaborate with companies like you met. It's a serious company and I appreciate that you support to us in, 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 uh, in the Congress. Because one other important issue is that we, we are doing this activity thanks to the companies that they support to us. This is very important. Uh, well, I finish. I think we have some time. Uh, Thank you very much, Dr. Thank, thank you. 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 Thank